It's good times. The, I don't I don't like scotch. I like whiskey. Is the best comment I get all the time. I it, that drives me crazy. <laughs> or I don't really like whiskey. I like bourbon. Yeah. It's like sorry what. Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And today we have the newest edition of the cartridge line from Lafroig. It's Warehouse One. Yeah, uh, Maker's Mark cask. A Maker's Mark cask. Yeah, interesting that they are putting that on the back of the tin. Kind of like a marketing ploy, I guess. Maker's Mark, one of the more known uh, bourbons. One yeah. distillery that kind of got into doing that, or the first one that I know is, was Brook Laddie. They were like kind of yeah. playing like, here's where we're getting our ex bourbon cast from. You yep. know, it's it's Jack Daniels, it's wherever. Um, kind of cool. I like it that matters. they do that. It does matter, in yeah. my opinion, right? Like, you know that, I mean, I'm not the biggest Maker's Mark fan, but you know that Maker's Mark really cares about their wood. Like, they're constantly mm-hmm. like treating it well and the, they have that whole like season like wood program. Sure. So yeah, of course they were they were one of the bigger uh, producers, and obviously they take great pride in their cast. So therefore, you think that their X cast would be uh, great for maturation. We'll review this one for you guys tonight. Uh, Warehouse One, which is situated, I believe, closest to the water at Lefroig, uh facility. So maybe getting a little more of that coastal element implemented into this whiskey. I wonder. I mean. It would be cool to compare it to something else that's not from Warehouse One. Yeah, and we do have some other uh, Lafroigs that maybe we'll compare this to, see what we think it most similar uh, to from their lineup. Sitting in the wings off screen. Um, Is Lafroig running out of ideas for their cartridge line? I mean, it's hard, right? (laughs) It's hard. To not repeat what they've done before. They've done a lot of stuff. Yeah, and they're already starting to kind of repeat, right? Like, they did the port, then they did a port in wine. You know, like, it, yeah. eventually, it's going to... You're going to come right back full circle. Exactly, right? right? Um, I mean, it would be cool if they took, like, a different twist. Like, try it in a mezcal cask, or try it in a tequila cask, or try it in, like, a rum cask, or something crazy like that. Yeah. I don't know. Has there been a cartridge in a rum cask? I'm just trying to look that up. I don't know. Has there been? <clears throat> I know there's been a Fino. That was the yellow one. There's yeah. been the PX, which I actually have right here off screen. This one right here, which I really like, by the way, the PX. Last one. year's PX cask yeah. uh, cartridge was great, yeah. Still haven't reviewed that one, to be honest, but... Um, yeah, uh, they've done a bunch of cool ones. Mm-hmm. I think they gotta start just going back to age stated, and then that in it, in and of itself will yeah will be different, right? I'm just trying to look up and seeing if there uh, if Whiskey Base had uh, an estimate on bottles produced for the cartridge line. I do not see that. I'm sure that it's quite a few. You know, and what's cool is like I know these are age um, non age stated, but you got to assume that they're pretty up there in age, like at least 10 years old, like, or in and around that age, because... I mean, I figure for the price point, right, it, you would assume that it is, is comparable to what they charge for their 10. Like, they charge more, obviously, the higher ABV, but yeah. it seems like it is in line that it would be... Yeah, know. like, what's the what's the 10 go for? Like, around 80 bucks? 80 and, bucks here, yeah. Yeah, I mean, which I'm is, sure you can find it for a lot cheaper in other markets, but... Yeah. So we'll review this one for you guys tonight. Uh, you get our first impressions of it and our scores. And also tonight, we're going to talk about is the secondary market seeing its peak? We have some examples of some very popular auction bottles that would appear that maybe we've had hit the peak of where whiskey is going to go. Because sometimes you get these bottles and they are outrageously yeah, it's, high at auction. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're kind of seeing... Uh, a dip in in Ontario in the housing market. So, um, for those of you that don't know, in Ontario during COVID, housing went up like um, almost a hundred percent. Like it was absurd. Like it, it went up like absurd. Not, obviously, it wasn't a hundred percent, but it was a lot. And then about what a month and a half ago, two months ago, the government decided to. Uh, get involved with the banks and start raising interest rates in order to tackle inflation. Sure, happening all over the world. Right. Yeah. So they're raising interest rates, and now the market is like almost at a standstill. Like a lot of people aren't buying at the moment. Uh, so what's happening is people that are 
forced to sell. Maybe they have something being built that's already being like closing very soon, whatever the case may be. They are now dropping their prices rapidly. So uh, an example in this area is, you know, a house that was listed really high has taken a 20% hit. I'm not going to get into numbers and stuff like that, but it's been a 20% hit already yeah. from its peak. So we're talking at the peak, it was what, in the fall of this year? Or yeah. sorry, fall of 2021? I think that's happening with whiskey right now. Yeah, of course. You take a look at inflation, you can, you know, the writing's been on the wall. Like there is a recession potentially happening, you know, uh, when goods are, you know, luxury goods are the first thing to get hit. Yeah. And I think the secondary market is a great indication as to where the retail market will head soon. Right? Sure. Like right now the retail market hasn't caught up because the secondary is still so much further ahead yeah. of the retail, right? Like you can't buy last year's PX uh, cartridge is probably worth like 250 bucks right now, right? Or at least at its peak. Um, that bottle is retail 100 bucks. So that's not, you're not gonna see a drop there anytime soon. Mm -hmm. It's when people are not even willing to spend a dollar over retail, which could happen within the next year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have some examples of some stuff that looks like it's kind of peaked. Because, I mean, it's, the market just got so out of control, right? And we're seeing this, too, in, like, secondary groups that I'm a part of. There's less participation now, yep. right? Bottle, the price of bottles are so insane that, like, where you'd normally put in, let's say, 20 bucks to get into, like, a lotto to win a bottle, now it's 45 bucks. Yeah. Now it's 55 bucks for the exact same bottle that it was, you know, two or three years ago. Which is absurd. And people just lost interest. It's just, right. like, it's just, it's just, it doesn't make sense because, like, with these secondary markets of some bottles, it, it's almost like you know, are you going to even open it? It's like whiskey has become this thing where it's not even a consumable anymore. It's just a trade commodity that yeah. cha changes hands over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. We got into this with Ralphie. Like, uh, I jokingly called it the new, the the tangible NFT. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing stuff like that also take a hit too of course like bitcoin for example i mean bitcoin just like <laughs> geronimo <laughs> see you later but we've seen this happen with bitcoin before sure we've seen it drop to like literally nothing almost, yeah and it can know? rebound of course of it can course rebound. but yeah you're right so let's take an example of a couple of things here um one bottle that's actually really interesting to look at was the spring bank 21 because this thing spiked oh, yeah. insanely huge um, a span of like one or two months. Almost you know. like it was almost fishy. Like all of a, all at once, every it spring was fishy. bank, right? Yeah. Every spring bank just went nuts. Yeah. So where you're looking at auction prices for the spring bank 21, you know, around 450 British pounds. Now we're getting these from Scotch Whiskey Auctions, is one of the bigger UK auction sites. Um, it spiked to just about 11, almost 1,200 pounds. Mm. So that's like an insane increase. Um, now we're looking back to about 700 pounds or so. So, you know, huge peak, but come right back down to earth almost. Yeah. Um, taking a look at something kind of more old school, McAllen. Uh, let's look at McAllen, 18 year old, the 1997. So this was the last year before they changed the bottle right type. Right before they changed it right? to um, a, a bottling date as opposed to a, a vintage date. Right. So this thing was like around, you know, 400 pounds, give or take, up to 500 pounds, peaked at almost a thousand pounds. Now right back down to 700 again. So that like looked like that could be a peak for that bottle. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. That's absurd. I mean, like. We're talking about the same bottle that they release every single year. It's not like yeah. it's super limited. It's it's probably not. It's probably like 100,000 bottled a year, maybe a little bit less than that. Yeah, I mean, the older the vintage you have, the more it's worth. Yeah. But it's, again, still, that's not a bottle that you would ever consider opening at that price because it's just the quality is just not there. What about all those people that are, like, making a fortress with, like bourbon with like that like high-end secondary like bourbon that retail costs 100 bucks that's got to be peaking i mean you would think so just because it comes out over and over and over again but you know people hoard it right i guess yeah like you take a look at our good instagram friend with this stupid mccallan freaking <laughs> harmony the uh the rich uh 
cacao cask. Yeah. Right? This yeah. fucking idiot has a <laughs> wall of boxes. How do you really feel, Jeremy? I mean, I can't stand that. <laughs> um, you know, he's bragging about the auction prices going insane. And sure, they peaked at just over 500 pounds, but now, you know, it's less dropping. than 400 pounds. There you go. You know, it's there dropping. So, where this guy think he's making a fortune on this, this thing could just straight go right back to retail. It's it's gonna happen, and it ha honestly, it sucks, but it has to happen. It has to happen. Like I feel bad for the people that in, like took out a line of credit in order to invest in some of these bottles, paid the peak at secondary. It's gonna come down. It's yeah. like you know, like unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are experiencing the same in the housing market. They paid the peak, and now they gotta wait a while until their house is worth what they paid. Right. Um, it's sad, but it's it's reality. It's it's you know, economics. You get lucky sometimes. Yeah. Um, that's why the best route of action is always to buy a retail. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I while we you were talking there, I pulled out the Lafroig ten cast strength from January twenty twenty one. So this is last year's edition, batch thirteen. Mm -hmm. um, a check good out comparison the color, to this. Check out the color difference. So I'm wondering, yeah. what is this straight bourbon maturation on the cast strength? I don't know. I don't know if it discloses it. It doesn't say here. I remember reading somewhere that there's like European oak, so I would assume that that means sherry. Right. So first impressions on this Karch's Warehouse One. Very like vibrant, lots yeah. of like, this is Laphroaig, right? Yeah. This is unmistakable, classic Laphroaig profile. Nice sweetness on the nose. Nice sweetness on the nose. You get like almost like a oceany, fishy kind of note. Like, Very maritime. Yeah. So maybe that warehouse one being close to the water does have an effect. Yeah. Like a, I want to call it clammy. Like I don't, I don't think it's a fishy note that I'm getting, but I associate. Sure. What I'm smelling. Yeah. With, it's with. like it's like sea spray. Yes. It's the wet rocks. It's that kind of like yeah. maritime. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, fish shell kind of mm -hmm. note to it. Yes, sir. And we're at 52.2%. We said that already? Yeah. Warehouse one. Yeah. It's, you know what? It's, there's vir virtually, I mean, people like to laugh at me because, you know, I could add a little bit of gasoline in my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in my drinks and still not feel like it's hot, but. Yeah. 52.2. I would say drinks closer to like, uh, you know, 46. Yeah. You, you would probably guess 46 if you, on first, on first try. Um, so Maybe, I mean, the finish kind of tells you that there's a little bit more than that, right? Yeah, the finish lingers. It's nice. I mean, where would you say this ranks as far as, like, Lefroy peat? I don't feel like it's super peaty. I don't know, do you? It seems more mild than something like this would be, which was the 10-year-old cast right. strength. I mean, the 10-year-old cast strength usually has the reputation of being, like, Lefroy's, like, benchmark. The for, big like, If you want that crazy Lefroy peat. Yeah. The quarter cask, I think, is the most peated, if I'm not mistaken, mm. or at least tastes the most, or smells the most peated. Um, this one has been open, so there's a little bit of a disclo disclosure yeah. here, for like months, maybe almost a year. Yeah. You know, so it's gonna make a difference on the peat. And the Freud does it does nicely round out when you've got the bottle open for a while, even if you've got it like super low for years. You can go back to that, and you just be like very, very nice. You never have to guess a uh, cast strength of Freud. Never. Honestly though, what's the price difference between these two? I think you can buy the the new cash rank, the four, batch fourteen for like what, hundred and thirty bucks in I Alberta? just bought one from the L C B O. Oh did you really? Yeah. hundred and forty? Maybe, yeah. One forty five? That sounds about right. It's, it's pretty honestly the Froy is always pretty reasonable at the L C B O. Yeah. Um <laughs> another mystery. Yeah. Which makes no <laughs> sense. Yeah. Um I love it. I love like the cash rank's always good. Mm -hmm. I I mean out of all the cash strengths I've had, this was the worst. Being open for so long, it's just, it's so good now. Mm. But uh, I think this needs probably a little bit of time. This is a this is a fresh crack, right? Yeah. Um, it's good. It's good for some. I love color. the sweetness. Yeah. The sweetness and the balance of the smoke and the peat and that medicinal seems to work really well. I feel like they blended it pretty pretty uh, pretty good for the masses for this yeah. one. So for I think it was it's been almost a year since I've done my last uh, Lafroy just because I've I did so much last mm -hmm. summer, 
So maybe something about summer makes me want to drink Laphroaig. I don't know. That's the opposite in my ex- like. That I know. I would want usually, but it, I feel like my mind for that is is changing. Is Laphroaig the summertime peated whiskey? Laphroaig is the best outdoor whiskey for me. Yeah. And the reason for that is is it stands up to what all the nuances that you're picking up yeah. in the in the air outside. Right. Right, so like I'm still gonna get that Lafroig nose. I, I'm gonna identify that as Lafroig. It's gonna be a lot easier, or like, as opposed to, I'm getting a Glen Alecky, and I'm like, damn, on the nose, I can't. Like you, sure. you see, you've seen me in a blind. I rely heavily on that nose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of determining where I'm placing things. Yeah. Um, I mean, Lafroig self-proclaimed the most flavorful Scotch in Scotland, uh, and you're right for outside drinking. Nothing's gonna cut through this. No, right? no, exactly. I I think that's why I, I gravitate toward like for me. I when I think Lafroig, I think like campfire. I think summertime yeah. cottage. Right. Perfect. Like right? I like a campfire would complement this. Mm-hmm. You know, it would pair it with it almost. Absolutely, absolutely. You take a sip of the cast strength. Yeah. Yeah, I do like this cast strength. That cast I mean, great. is there a cast strength you've had that hasn't been good? I think all the batches are pretty solid. There, so there was a Karch's cast strength, was there not? Mm-hmm. They called it the cast strength? Mm-hmm. But are these all cast strength, or are they just like watered down to like high 50s? I'm going to assume, because this one does not say cast strength on it. Yeah. Previous years did. The PX does say cast strength right on the front. That's right. Right? Yes, it does. And that but ABV is what? 58.9. 58.9. So we're down to 52 point whatever, half. 52.2. 52.2. So yeah, I would assume that this has water added. I mean, if they're not going to say cast strength, obviously it's not cast strength. And it's not going to be cast strength at 52. Not with just X bourbon maturation for, you know, I feel like this might be 10 years, older probably. than the cast strength, though. The, um, the maker's mark uh, carches. You think maybe this is older than 10? Mm-hmm. Or a combination of some older casts in there as well. Which... Mind you, so like the cast strength ten could also have older whiskey in it, mm-hmm. but it drinks. I know it's this is what's the difference here, fifty seven point nine. So, you know, five percent difference, five point five percent to five point whatever percent difference. Yeah, um, I mean, you could contribute maybe some older whiskey in this new carches as the reason why you don't get as much of that peat note. Yeah, um, and of course, maybe like the watering it down also contributes to that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it definitely plays a factor, but I like it. Yeah. I think it's good. I think I find it interesting the color difference. I don't know if the camera. Oh, I just spilled some. <laughs> Again, um, color. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick that. I up. doubt it. I'm just gonna say that the the ten year old is a bit darker, right? It's about two shades darker, yeah. right? But we don't know if the ten's 100 percent ex bourbon cast mature. It could have a couple. I'm gonna try to buy one of those um, color like charts you ever seen those before where you can hold it up to your whiskey and see what and shade see, it is yeah like what's the point of that i don't know it's pretty cool it <laughs> just would be, to say if it it's would be really better close. to describe these two i see right like this is a one and then this one is like a four i see and then the viewers at home could pull out their little thing right and be like okay we can sell a whiskey rent this color version of, of this one. color of p <laughs> <laughs> so secondary market let's just go back to that what are we looking? Are we gonna see it just crash? Are we just gonna see it come right down? Cause like I think so. Here's I, something that like that people do in the secondary market to inflate their price, right? Like this idiot on Instagram has all of this inventory. No one else can buy any because he's right. bought it all up. The corner he of the gets, market. He gets his buddy to go onto these auction sites and pump up the bottle, right? That's right. So now it's artificially inflated. Yep. And then he tries to dump it. Right. We don't know if he's done. I don't think he's dumped it. Because he's constantly posting more pictures on his stupid Instagram about how many more bottles he has. So it's an artificial inflation yeah. of this bottle, yep. right? And now, if people aren't paying this money, it could just drop right off. I mean, I think you're still going to have your pappies up there. You're still going to have these big name things. Yeah. But something like this Macallan, you know, Cacao. this Harmony, yeah. which is like... Uh, do you know is it yeah. too, th- that they saturate the market with it like do people care that much about this bottle I wonder that's gonna take off like a Macallan edition one took off so I poured Glen Alecky 12 and Macallan Harmony the other day blind for like three guys mm-hmm. and all of them picked the Glen Alecky 12 over the Macallan Harmony 
right? So think about that. There's no secondary market for the Glen Allocky 12 at all. Yeah. Like it's it's retail 70 bucks. Yeah, <clears throat> but like the 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 bottles that get the most amount of secondary market love are not the best drinking whiskeys. Which is mind-boggling to me because like what the hell's the point of collecting a whiskey that's garbage? Like yeah. it like to get your ponies like I don't, I don't understand it yeah. I'll never understand it um, it's it's actually detrimental so in in a lot of ways I do hope that the secondary market tanks a bit mm-hmm. because I like you said the ones that are the gems are still gonna stick around yeah. like off camera we have a, a Spay Malt McAllen uh, Gordon McPhail it's in my opinion it's a gem it's a 21 year old uh, McAllen at cast strength at cast strength yeah um, Gordon McPhail's not using bad cherry casts for that they're they're no. deciding to use like their best right right so like and you're getting that the retail on that is around 350 bucks sure the cheaper then you could buy an official bottle of McAllen 18 for 18 right 18 right. and we're getting at 21 at cast strength right at, at 43% at 43% right so and but that bottle can like command secondary market price. I'm not saying this one doesn't. It would. But it it will. will. It will. But, but not, this one rightly so. Whereas like what the hell sure. are we buying the McAllen 18 at 43 percent for? Who and we had this we had this conversation in a previous rant about the secondary market and the stuff that we purchase on the secondary market is stuff like this mm-hmm. that we think is worth the secondary market price, right? Exactly. We talked about some yeah. stuff from Shelter like, Point, like those those really good batches that we would we would pay double retail for that because right. we think it's worth it. Absolutely. Like Mike and Narby pull out some bottles that like are worth like two grand, five grand, whatever they're worth. And it's like, hell yeah, I pay that for that. Like that's a once in a lifetime experience to try something like that. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not a once in a lifetime experience to try a Pappy Van Winkle. It's no, just not. They like, make it every year. It's every year. And eventually you're going to r- stumble into a bar, you're going to stumble into a friend, you're going to figure out a way to try that whiskey and be like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's right? going to be your reaction, right? Yeah. Like, not like, oh my God. It's going to be like, yeah, okay. If you take a look at everyone who's like, reviewed Pappy Van Winkle, they all say the same thing. Yes, it's good whiskey. Yeah. It's good bourbon. No yeah. doubt about it. It is yeah. good. They're not but good is bourbon. it worth the secondary price? Every single person will say absolutely not. Anybody in their right mind trying that, saying it's worth what it's, like the liquid is worth what it's valued at is absurd. Yeah. They're absurd. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I would love to see a secondary market crash. Um, I mean, just because I have nothing. I'm not sitting on anything. Yeah. So you it's just nothing unloaded, on me. You unloaded in the peak. <laughs> <laughs> I did unload in the peak. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's like anything else. If you can weather the storm, Mm -hmm. it might come back up. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, something with every like cycle, you hope that something corrects and is a little and makes the next cycle a little stronger. So it's not, it won't suffer as much. You know what I mean? And in this case, I hope it's quality whiskey that is highly sought after and yeah. you don't have to be in an allocation for like any stupid bourbon or any mm-hmm. stupid like i'm sorry like there was a time where spring bank 12 was easily accessible you can buy it off the shelf that's not the case anymore spring bank 10 same thing spring bank 15 same thing like that shouldn't be that the, the only reason that's happening is because people are buying a bunch of it and sitting on it and not drinking it yeah. right because if it was just buy one consume it you know, like even have a second as a backup to consume. Nobody's ever going to like stockpile these kind of whiskeys. You know what I mean? Like it, it's not worth it. So once that stops, yeah, you know, we'll see, yeah. a, we'll see a drip, like a drop. Sorry. I think, I think for sure. I think you're right. Um, so let's go to this Lafroy. What are you going to say on the nose? Let's go, let's go through it. A few notes, nose palette and we'll score it. Like we said before, it's very maritime. Yeah. It's very wet rocks. It's seashells. It's that like sea breeze, that ocean spray. Mm-hmm. It's very maritime. I would there's, say. There's like a nice like when you wade through that. Like I don't get a lot of peat. I don't know about you, but I'm not getting a ton. Uh, I get like a nice like v- like vanilla powdered sugar kind of note. Yeah, I love the sweetness on it is really good. Yeah. I do get peat, but when you're comparing it to like Lafroig, yeah, it's less than you would normally get. Yeah. Yeah, like, I get more on the cast strain. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, on the palate, I think a lot of the notes from the nose translate to the palate. I love the balance between the sweetness and the peat and that brininess. Mm -hmm. I would say that this is like maybe not as like medicinal as other Lefroigs are. I'm right there with you. Like right, it's like the medicinal level has been turned down. Absolutely, medicinal levels turned down. Cla like there's something classic about Lefroig that that goes beyond peat, right? There's something that like is identifiable and, and you can still find it in the older expressions that they have. That's there. The yeah. essence of Lefroy is there. Mm -hmm. But I would say the peat is dialed back. The, like you said, the, the hospital, like bandage, like yeah. that kind of note dialed back. Yeah. Um, that like muscle cream medicinal, yeah. Note, right? Yeah. Not there. It's not as like, you know, a magic marker yeah. kind of note yeah. there. Um, more, a little bit more maritime, a little bit more sweet, a little bit more like ironed out almost, yeah. right? I even like, I get zero heat on this palette. Like, especially now side by side with the, the cast rank. Mm -hmm. There's like, I know the water has like watering it down to maybe 52, whatever. Yeah. Maybe this started at 60 or whatever it did. Um, I feel like there might be something else involved in that because even at 52.2, you would think it drinks a little hotter. Yeah. So I'm, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I mean, I think score wise for me on this, it's, it's a, it's a very easy 86. I think it's got lots of good elements to it. Um, but I think when you put it in a price point that's comparable to the 10 year old cast strength, I would have to lean cast strength every single time, like yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I just don't, I think for me, like, I've, I've had this profile of Lefroy before. That's it's like it is. this. It's not giving me anything new. It's just the same. It's the same thing. This just for, like slightly, yeah. very slightly different. It reminds me of the the standard uh, ten year old with a bit more ABV. I feel like it's like when you compare these two, you almost feel like this one might be chill filtered. Mm. Like it, it almost has that kind of chill filtered kind of essence to it. I feel like yeah. I feel like. I say this a lot sometimes in my reviews. It's like it's been blended for the masses, right? Right. It's been it's, it's the edge has been taken off of mm -hmm. it, and it appeals to more drinkers. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily what we look for in, in in a new whiskey that we're opening for the first time. Yeah, I would say the biggest difference is viscosity here. I mean, and be, and with that viscosity, um, you know, you get a little bit more of that Lafroy. Mm -hmm like magic marker and medicinal and whatever with yeah. the cast strength. Whereas I'm not getting majority of that with the, with the new carches. I like them both. I'm enjoying it. I, I am think, enjoying this. Yeah. I think it's great. Honestly, I think it's great. Um, I think there's a time and a place for both of these. If mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like the, the cast strength, I can't drink every single night. It's a, it's a big, bold whiskey. And if I drink that, I'm not having anything else after it. Like yeah. that, that's going to dominate my palate. Yeah. Whereas this, you could. You could pour this and it'll be whatever. So I, I think because of that, I'm going to give this one an 87. Gonna, I like this okay, one. Okay, nice. Yeah, I like this one. Nice. Yeah. We are excited about the drop in, or the potential drop in whiskey prices, I think. Yeah, I mean, I would love to get back into, you know, the secondary market game, playing some more lotteries, because it was, like, so much fun back it fun. It when was I first started out. A couple of bucks here and there. Yeah, you're like, everyone throws in 20 bucks, you can win yourself yeah. a good bottle of something that you would want to open and right. drink. Yeah. Now, it's like, you got to spend 45 bucks to win it, and then once you have this bottle, it's like, okay, this is, like, a $1,000 bottle. Yeah. Like... That's crazy. It's not worth a thousand dollars. No. Should I open this? Like it's crazy. I don't want to. So have it goes. To... It goes back up the lottery again. Right? Exactly. It's like over and over and over. Yeah. I don't want to have to buy something and that's why like usually my motto is bring it home, open it right away. Because if you don't, <laughs> you start to look up the prices. You start to like it's the it's the devil in your ear like saying like no don't open that man you can get good money for that bottle yeah. and like I I hate doing that and I try to you know always at least open one of like whatever I buy right so yeah I mean the LCBO I would have to say is doing a better job at taking their like allocated bottles that are super popular and putting them online for a one per customer or a two per customer kind of thing yeah the rollout recently was better yeah they had Lefroy 
10 year old cash drink which as cool. an example yeah. of that, which is great because yeah. people just don't go into the store and buy up cases and cases and cases. Yeah. They did it with bourbons, right? Yeah. They had the Weller 107 yeah. special reserve. Everybody had a shot at that. As well. Everyone had a shot at it, same with Blanton's. So are we giving um, the LCBO like some ticks? We should give them maybe a couple, but we should also pump our brakes. Because I talked to a friend of mine who also got into the same thing, yeah. bought himself a couple bottles, and then LCBO came back to them and was like, sorry, we're not giving you these. What? Because you ordered them too late and the inventory was gone. Even though it had very specific inventory levels on the site. Wow. So what he's concluded is that they potentially oversold. Right. They didn't have their numbers right. Shocker. Yeah. Absolute yeah. shocker. <laughs> or some big restaurant, some big client came in and be like, I that's, need 12 cases. That sounds about Cancel right. Cancel your last 150 orders. Right? Unbelievable. So as we do give them points, we don't give them too many too quick because they're still messing up at a just disgusting level. So two steps forward, one, one <laughs> exactly. step back. <laughs> exactly. Maybe one day they will actually get their shit together and do it completely right. But yeah, you guys almost had us. Right? To order something and know that there's like, you know, still hundreds of bottles left yeah. and be like securing your spot and then getting an email saying that your order's been canceled because of this is like just classic LCBO. Classic LCBO. Idiots. <laughs> 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 so I'm an 86, you're an 87. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that if you don't have a Laphroaig collection, this one might be something that you'd be interested in. But if you have other bottles, I mean, this is this profile is something that we've we've had before. So it's nothing really that unique or new. I don't yeah. think too much about Laphroaig. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's very good. Um, like I said, it's lighter. It's a little bit more of an everyday kind of pour and play whiskey mm -hmm. as opposed to the cash act, which I think you need to like set aside a night for yeah. Laphroaig to, in, you know, that cash rank, you can't have much after that. Sure. So I'm getting a little bit of baking spices on this now, which is actually really nice. As well. Yeah. Honestly, it's good. I, I actually really like it. I bet you if we like did this at the end of the summer, this bottle would go up a point each uh, for each of us. You know what I mean? That's probably true because once you get this thing down past the shoulder, you let it sit a couple months. It's gonna, it's gonna open up. Probably get a little more complex. Has has Laphroaig become the most reliable whiskey company from Scotland in the last six years? Hmm. Consistent releases. Consistently good. Decently priced for our market. Anyway. For our market, for We're sure. We're a market where we pay stupid money for for stuff. Yeah. These seem to be okay. Yeah. You and it, even up until recently, like the higher end stuff was still pretty well priced. And like recently it took a spike, but yeah. like you could, two years ago, you could buy the, the 25 year old for like 400 bucks. They came up with a 10 year old cherry. It was pretty solid. Yeah, it I was liked pretty that solid. A lot, actually. I yeah. liked it. I yeah. gave it a decent score. I think it's maybe the, a tick higher than this one. This PX I really enjoy. Last year's PX was great. Yeah. Um, um, the 16 that they came out with was pretty good. The quarter cask is always good. I'm waiting for them to recreate the 18 year old. The green tin 18 was, was such a gem from them. That, but that's an anomaly. We might only be a couple years away. Yeah. Because the 16, you know, we Maybe. might we might get an 18 Although, that's really good. I will say, this is 48%, the 16, mm -hmm. very good. But probably my most disappointing Laphroaig out of the last, like, 10 that I bought. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's still very good. So, yeah. like, that, that says a lot, I think. If Laphroaig can get back to that 18 green tin, it's good. It, I agree with you. If Laphroaig raises their standard 10 year old 3%, mm -hmm. they will go down as my, my favorite distillery. Because like they're just always consistent. I always know. like, you know, you pick up a Laphroaig, you know what you're getting, yeah. and it's enjoyable. Throw a half ounce of Laphroaig into your old fashioned, Ooh. substitute the simple syrup with maple syrup, and you've got yourself a phenomenal cocktail. I guarantee you, you'll love it. Yeah. yeah. I would go with a full, like one ounce, one, <laughs> one and a half ounce <laughs> cash drink. <laughs> yeah, do, do an ounce of bourbon, a half ounce of Laphroaig, maple syrup instead of simple syrup. Absolutely amazing. I think we are both old fashioned guys, yeah? 
my favorite cocktail yeah. by far. Yeah, uh, there's a, apparently there's a thing, like you're either an old fashioned guy or a Manhattan guy. You, you can't be both. Yeah, see I'm not like, I'm not huge on vermouth. Okay. I don't like vermouth that much. I've only had a couple that I thought were decent, right. and I've had it vermouth like a very small amount in different kinds of cocktails, not mm -hmm. just a Manhattan. Okay. But yeah, if you don't like vermouth, then you're not gonna like it. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely an old fashioned guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. All right, what's going to do it for us? Um, leave us a comment down below. Are you excited about this new cartridge line? Do you think that Lefroy has run out of ideas? They're just going to like, eh, we got stuff for some Warehouse One. It's all makers. Yeah. That's their thing. Are you pro or con secondary market plummeting? Oh, yeah. Are you sitting on a bunch of stuff? Are you sitting on a bunch of stuff <laughs> and like really hoping it doesn't? Or do you not care? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see. We'll see about the market. I mean, I think we'll see fluctuations on stuff, right? Yeah. Big name stuff, I think, will continue to be big. Yep. But those fringe things on the outside that you think might go crazy, I think they're going to plummet, man. I yeah. think they're going down. I think so. I think, yeah. yeah. I think you're bang on. I think they're going down. All right, that's going to do it for us. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Give us a like. And uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.